What's the word, y'all? Game 3 of the NBA Finals just wrapped up, and I'm going to be honest with you. Out of, out of the game so far, this one was the duck. That don't mean there wasn't fun things about it or it's not things to talk about, but the first two felt like bangers. And this one, not so much. The Denver Nuggets were pretty much in control from the very beginning, and they ran with it. They did not allow a fourth quarter comeback, which is something that the Miami Heat have done through the first two games. And one of them, the comeback came a little bit late, so the Denver Nuggets were able to hold on. And then in the game two, uh, they, they, they had a lot of time, and they made that thing happen. And in the game three, they did not take that big run. The only time in this game you're like, uh-oh, here come the Heat, is when it was garbage time, and it's a Duncan Robinson comes off the bench because now he's a garbage time player after being one of the best players on the court throughout the first couple games, and he had a couple threes. You're like, oh, Eric Spolstra's like, let's get let's get them starters back in. And then Bam takes a uh, contested mid-range jump shot over KCP, and then Spolstra's like, you know what? Let's take these starters right back out. Before we go any further, let me tell you about our sponsor, Price Picks. Hit the link in the description, download the Price Picks app, and use code Kenny so they can match your deposit up to $100. Price Picks is daily fantasy that is you versus the numbers. You pick some of your favorite, the least favorite athletes. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists. You look at a number and you say if you think that they're going to have more or less than that number. For example, it was an entry I made on baseball the other day. I'm heavy into baseball. Shout out to Ellie Dana Cruz. Like, the dude is a stud. This from two or three nights ago. And I got a five for five, man. Just, just trust in my instincts. Boba Shed is just ridiculous. So I'm like, give me those bases. Corey Seager's been playing very well, so I saw his bases took that. Cal Hendricks going into this game had six strikeouts in three of his last four games. He was like, you know, I'll take my chances and put the more, and here we go turning $20 into $200. It's not a lot of games of basketball left, but as you can see, you can do baseball, you can do football, you can do League of Legends. There are so many different options. If there's a sport, you can probably play prize picks on it. So download the app and use Coke Kenny so they can match your deposit up to $100. The main takeaway from all of this is something that we've been talking about for the last couple months about the greatness of Jokic. Not just the last couple months, the last couple years, because this has spanned back uh, for three to four years at this point, how great he is. And a few weeks ago, uh, a month or so ago, I was saying like, hey, if Giannis is not the best player in the world anymore, shout out to Giannis, um, then it's got to be Jokic. And he showcased why that is again today. Um, there's a lot of conversation about the idea of making Jokic a score. Is that the game plan? And then Spolstra shut all of that down, said to an untrained, ah, it might seem like that. And I was like, hey, Spo, you ain't, you ain't got to point a brother out like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, had, I wasn't in the film room with you for 20 years ago. So, yes, technically I am an untrained eye. But that's felt, that felt like that was the game plan. In game two, they took Jamal Murray out of the game and said, let Jokic do Jokic. At least that's what it felt like. Don't ask Spolstra, but that's what it felt like. And in this one, you couldn't do that. Uh, both of those boys went crazy. I think they, I just saw a stat at the end when they were uh, interviewing Nikola Jokic that Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic became the, t the only two teammates in NBA history to have 30-point tri triple doubles in the NBA Finals. Insanity. And they pulled this game away, um, and they were in control for most of it without Michael Porter Jr. doing anything. It's a second straight dud game for MPJ. Um, and, and then also KCP to do anything. But the boy that stepped up was that Christian Brown fella. Christ Christian Brown, don't call him Braun, really came in and gave ridiculous minutes to the second quarter, to the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. He was elite today. Elite in his role. Obviously, there were two people on the court that were elite today. That was Jokic and Jamal Murray. But elite in his role, when you see some of the, the higher-end role players of your team not shooting well, with Michael Porter Jr. being 1 for 7, 0 for 2 from 3, and KCP being 1 for 4, 0 for 3 from 3, they needed some type of production, and you got that from Christian Brown. And in the end of Game 2, when KCP was asked about it, um, actually, I got the quote in front of me. He said, I don't think they did anything to take anything away. I don't think it really mattered. It was all about our energy and effort we put out. Um, and, and that was the sentiment from Michael Malone um, after game one. He came to the podium and said, hey, we might have won this game, but I know you're going to laugh at me, but I think we played a bad game. At the end of game two, he talked about how much the effort mattered. We're like, hey, it's the NBA Finals. Th th this, is the, this is what we've been playing for. For you to have the effort in game two is ridiculous. And in this game, it felt like the effort and the communication was better. And when I watched it, there was only one moment where there was a big miscommunication. Again, there's probably way more, but one that stands on top of mind where it ended up in a Gabe Vincent open three, or it might have been Caleb Martin. One of them got an open three, and Jamal Murray looked at Coach Mike Maloney, put his hands up, and said, my fault. Like, that was the only time I can vividly remember them having these miscommunications. And in the last game, it felt like they were so abundant. And this is this a game like this is why they were, or it, they are the favorite to win this series. You have the best player on the court, who, who at this point in time, it doesn't... This is going to sound crazy, but it feels like there's not a such thing of, as a Nikola Jokic bad game. Show me the Nikola Jokic bad game this playoff run. You know what? I'm about to go do some digging myself because off top of mind, I can't think of a Nikola Jokic bad game. The, like, like we temper our expectations to certain players. Last game, 
Four turnovers, five assists is unlike him. But brother, he had 40 points. You know what I'm saying? So let me look at the game log real quick. The worst game in the playoffs for him so far is this game versus the Wolves where they won by 29 points, so it didn't matter. But he himself had, uh, he shot 50% from the field. He had 13 points and uh, 14 rebounds, six assists, and he fouled out. That was the worst game in the playoffs so far for him. And, and the worst thing is him fouling out. Everything else looks pretty fine to me. He has become one of those players that bad games don't exist. So if you have that and you just have some type of production from anybody else, and today Jamal Murray was elite, I, I just don't know how you beat that in a seven-game series. Now, if there's anybody that can do it, it is the Miami Heat. They got to recuperate because as of right now, a lot of their success boils on the back of that three-point shooting. One of four for Max Struess from three, one of seven overall, two of ten overall for Gabe Vincent, one for six from three. And then Jimmy attempted four threes. He made one. They shot as a team 31%. And this is saying something. They won the three-point battle today. Because I mentioned how Michael Porter Jr., KCP, these guys did not hit their shots. The, the Nuggets haven't had an offensive juggernaut game just yet. And they're, they're just due. Now, a lot of credit of that goes to the Miami Heat because their defense is so stout. But they're just due to have a game where Michael Porter Jr. hit four threes and KCP hit four threes. And then what do you do at that point? Because the, the moments that the Miami Heat have to win is when we have these grinded out games where it's a couple possessions. The statistic about how good the Miami Heat have been this season when it comes to five-point swings in, in the fourth quarter. You know what I'm saying? But if it's anything outside of that, like the Denver Nuggets have that advantage and they haven't shot the ball well at all. All throughout this series. They haven't shot. I mean, literally shooting. Because they got all everything they wanted in the paint today. Everything that they wanted was in the paint today. And that's partially Nicole Jokic going out for 32. But I think at halftime, uh, or I'm sorry, at the end of the first quarter, they had like 30 points. And 22 of those were in the paint. Like, that's how much they were really pounded in inside. And it's like, hey, if the shot's not falling, you got to score. And I appreciate that that was the idea that they had. Because there are a lot of teams out in the NBA that was like, the shot's are not falling, we just going to keep shooting. Um, instead, <laughs> instead of taking what's uh, potentially available, which is getting to the basket. I don't know. Hopefully, uh, this isn't the case. But at the last couple minutes of this game, Kyle Lowry got up limping, and he was, he was. They had the camera on him, and he didn't look great. I hope, I'm hoping that he's, he didn't hurt himself or anything like that, because that would just suck the life out of the series even more. Um, because he has been pretty good for them so far. Um, and they can't afford to lo to lose another play. I mean, we're still trying to figure out if, if Tyler Harrow's going to play at all this series. You cannot lose another guy. I'm surprised not to see more Duncan Robinson. I know when he got into the game, he picked up two early fouls, and then Spolster was like, you know what, we'll just run with the other dudes. But he was such a, a big part in the game to win. So to see him basically play 10 points, 10 minutes leading up to garbage time was surprised to me, especially when he gets to garbage time. He had two threes. You're like, ah, oh, maybe he should have played a little bit more. They cut down the Cody Zeller minutes quite a bit. Him only playing six minutes, which is good. Bam has been such a, a weird person throughout this series where game one, 25 points on 26 shots or so. Game two, I thought he was amazing. I, I don't know exactly what his stats were. I'm not even thinking about how many points he put up. I thought in game two, he was the best player for the Miami Heat in that game outside of Gabe Vincent. Then in game three, he did a lot of the stuff, a lot of similar attempts than he was in game one and game two. But because he's such a pull-up, mid-range heavy dude, if those shots are not going, it's like, man. Now, he did get to the free throw line and shot 10 free throws, which I appreciate. But there are a couple times in this game where he shot an early mid-range jump shot. And I'm like, man, I feel like you could have got something better. Because at this point in this series, the different Nuggets are allowing him to do that. So if we know that that shot is going to be there with five seconds on the clock, let's work our action a little bit more to try to get a different shot because we know we can rely on that shot if we need to. And today was not one of those days where he hit his shots. Overall, man, not, not a ton of swings in this one. Not a ton of swings in this one, um, which as a neutral fan, I don't really love. I, I love when it's like, oh, here come the Miami Heat on the run. And oh, how would the Denver Nuggets retaliate or vice versa? It wasn't a ton of that today. And I, I guess that's fine. Friday night, we get another game in Miami. Uh, let's see if the Miami Heat... You know, do they think? I don't think you want to be down 3-1 to the Denver Nuggets. So I, I would look at game four as a must win. I'm curious to see what Eric Spolster decides to do a little bit differently this time around. Um, or were KCP words true? We're not worried. They're not even doing nothing. We're just not hitting our shots. And we're not, we're not putting together the energy and the effort. If that's true, series might be over soon.